help me to to, uh, to order via a Zoom meeting June 11th, 2020 at 7 p.m. And present we have Mary Beth McGrath, who's the director of the Board of Health. And uh, we have Amy, you're going to be sitting in. Okay, Amy Carey. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Daniels and Mr. Duncan are both are both what? Uh, They're applicants, but if I, I'm going to need a roll call vote, Dr. Nettleman, from you and Laurie that you're present. Okay. So uh, roll call, Dr. Dr. Nettleman. Dr. Dr. Bregoli is absent. He's recovering from uh, an episode of COVID-19, so it does strike home. But uh, that leaves myself and uh, Laurie. Uh, uh, and, and the two of us will be present for the next <laughs> So, meeting. Dr. Nettleman, for each, yes. and every, each and every motion, I'm going to need a roll call. So, if I can get a roll call of your presence and Laurie's presence, I'd appreciate it. So, okay, go, go ahead. So, Dr. Nettleman present? Yep. Laurie present? Yeah. Okay. So, for each and every motion that you make, I'm, you make a motion, it will be seconded, and then I'll have to call for a roll call. That's what you need to do on a okay. Zoom meeting. You got it. Okay. Um, first order of business is the approval of the minutes from uh, May 14th. Laurie, have you had a chance to look at them? Yes, I have. And I um, move to approve the minutes from um, May 14th, 2020. Right. I second. Okay. okay. And I need a roll call. Laurie? Here. And Dr. Nettleman? Yes. Okay. Okay. The next thing is a list of complaints. And uh, there's only three items there. Um, again, the business of what action has been taken, particularly in the one having to do with Ciola's, um, I'm, I was just concerned about that. So we had received a complaint through the DEP that there was some dumping of, of mop water going into the river or stream behind Cielo Mexican restaurant. When the staff member went over to do a follow-up, there was no evidence of that occurring. So it was reported directly back to the DEP that there appeared to be no evidence. And in speaking with the establishment, they, were, they could not confirm that that was happening. They, they advised that it wasn't. So right. we're not sure Thank if it's that location or neighboring location. Very good. good. Thank okay. You. Uh, under new business, we have the keeping of the animals, and we have six applications. And uh, Mr. Duncan, you're up first, so let's uh, take that one, Mary, uh, Mary Beth, uh, Laurie. Okay, so Mr. Duncan lives at 63 Helen Road in Braintree and is requesting a permit for the keeping of four chickens on his property. Attached in your packet, you have the uh, property information uh, indicating his ownership. He has notified the direct abutters, which are those abutters that touches his property of uh, his request for a keeping of chickens permit. And we also have some plot plans indicating where the proposed coop would go, as well as the aerial view so you know where the property is in relationship to other streets surrounding that, so you're familiar with the area. So Mr. Duncan is proposing, there's a picture of the property as well, an aerial view picture of the property. And it shows the house in the front on Helen Road and then a pool directly behind the house. And then further back is a shed, and then the, to the left of the shed would be the chicken coop as you're looking down at the property. So the, the chicken coop itself would be 10 foot from the rear property line and 25 feet from each side property line. And Mr. Duncan can confirm that indeed that is the case and give more information on the proposed coop. Yes, that's all true. I would say the only thing, it's not a shed next to the coop, it's a tree. Oh, oh sorry, like it looks like there was a building on the plan. Yeah. It looks like there are three abutters. Yes. So there are three abutters, and I've heard from one of the abutters that is concerned about several things. Number one, noise. And I have exp expressed to that residence that there will no, be no roosters as part of this request for chickens. She's also concerned about um, the attraction of wildlife and rodents, which I know that's something that the board always considers and discusses with an applicant, as well as um, how the compost is going to be 
uh, maintained and you know how often cleaned up, et cetera. So, Mr. Duncan, did you want to express um, how you would handle those concerns? Yes, I mean we'll do what you know. We'll be you know there are five kids, so we you know me, my wife, and my five kids. We all know that we have to make sure that it's clean, so we don't get any extra rodents. We've, we've protected the coop back there with chicken wire under it and all around it. So it will you know, keep them away as much as possible. Uh, and then we'll be out there cleaning it on a, probably a daily basis to make sure that there's no buildup of odors or anything that will attract you know, too much attention to, uh, you know, to bother the neighbors. It, it would be nice if you would speak with the neighbors periodically. Don't wait for Mary Beth to be in touch with them and just make sure that they're happy and satisfied. Will do. I mean, the two on either side, we speak to a lot. The one behind us who was farther away, uh, we've had more trouble and I assume that's the one who was called. Um, we try to get in touch with them and talk to them numerous times and they've never responded to any of our uh, attempts to talk to them. And it wasn't until we, you know, we had to send them a certified letter that we actually so they would acknowledge that we sent them a notification of our uh, intention to have chickens. Okay. Well, as, and the board can express this to you too, they, they, we have had a lot of chicken requests for the keeping of chicken permits over the years and most recently within the last several months. And I can see why where eggs are $4 and 50 cents a dozen. <laughs> but, um, the, the concern for the most part of, of butters is odor, the attraction yep. of wildlife in rodents, and um, how the property will be maintained of the manure. So those are normally the top three concerns, as well as the chickens getting out and running loose. Okay. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're not going to compost. We're going to throw out the manure. Um, okay. We're not a compost that, you know, we don't have gardens. We don't have anything like that. We're not going to keep it. We're going to dispose of it in the trash. Um, and then we, in the process of that, we're going to keep it as clean as possible because it is, the chickens are really uh, one way for our kids to learn some responsibility also to, and we don't want it to, we're not going to let them, you know, run around the property because we also have talked to uh, other friends who've had chickens. And if you just let them run free, most likely you're going to see a grizzly death back there from, you know, a hawk or whoever you can't keep out of the yard. So it's making sure that they stay in the coop unless there is, you know, supervision, and when I say supervision, anybody out there with them um, to make sure that nothing happens to them if they're, and, and it's kept clean. Right. right. And so the thing I would um, suggest um, with that is making sure that they, as they grow, that they don't fly, that you clip the wings. And okay. then with the waste product in the trash, making sure that your trash lid is always tight, otherwise you're going to get an incredible odor. So if you find you got five kids, you may need to buy another trash bag to make sure that you don't have that lid up because that would definitely cause them to complain. And then we have to come and tell you no chickens, which is a very terrible thing, especially for your children and you get very attached to them. So to be very mindful of that as well. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, I'd we like actually, to... oh, oh, I'm sorry, Amy. Go ahead. It's okay, Bill. I, I guess for everybody that's on there, because I'm one of the inspectors that goes out, if you folks could get a bag of lime, uh, that will help when you put your uh, the, the manure in a bag and put it in a trash container, put some lime over it because it will help with the odor. Okay. The one plan we did have was to keep a separate trash can just for the compost. Uh, or for yeah. the manure and then throw it into you know bring it out friday or saturday because that's when our pickup is to get in the barrel then because you know squirrels have already done a number on the on our brain tree one and you know and i don't i want to keep one that's more sealed up so there's no problems with mess or smell or attracting more rodents than we would want or any rodents at all because we don't want any right. exactly. i'll so, be i'll be coming out and doing inspections here in the next couple of weeks Okay. Um, once you all get the chickens, if you can uh, be so nice to email me, let me know when you have the chickens so I can come out. I'm not going to waste my time or your time as we're going to be opening restaurants here in the next. Right. Oops, I lost you, Amy. You went on mute. Um, Unmute. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's just e either email or call and leave me a message okay. if I'm not in the office. And then I'll just come out and if you all get approved, I'm just 
Yep. You know, okay. I'm jumping ahead. Okay. So. Thank you, Amy. Um, Mr. Duncan, um, thank you for being mindful of the needs around you and, and for the residents who abut you. Um, very important with, you know, putting the chickens in and, and making sure that we don't cause any, um, any concerns for our butters. Um, yes. with, with that, I would um, put a motion forward to approve the four chickens for Mr. William Duncan at 63 uh, Helen Road in Braintree. Second. And I need a roll call, Laurie? Yes. Dr. Nettleman? Yes. Okay, so uh, Mr. Duncan, you have been approved for the keeping of four chickens on the property. You will receive a permit to keep the chickens and the permit will be good for one year. So next year in the springtime, you'll receive a renewal notice. Okay. And should any complaints be received, we would do routine inspections normally. Should any complaints be received, then we would follow up with you on any complaint that would be received. Great, thank okay. you. We hope that doesn't happen. Yep. Oh, Amy wants to talk. She's saying one minute, but she's muted. Come on, okay. girl. I just unmuted. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do this right. <laughs> um, so everybody that's on today, uh, make sure you go online and pay for your permits. Twenty five dollars because I can't issue a permit until you the fee has been paid. So I will get that taken care of in the next few days. Great. Okay. The need next me? one uh, we have here is Victor Agostino. Mr. Duncan, um, if you wanted to leave, you can. You don't have to stay. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if I could. Um, Andrew, there is an attendee in the box. Is that person able to maybe talk? We're not sure if that's one of our applicants. Well, let, let's just go uh, by, yeah. by that. I can allow it to talk just to confirm. Okay. All right. Uh, I've unmuted Rick. the caller. Okay. So is Mr. Augustino on the line? Yes, there he is. Okay, so the oh. agenda, your agenda item is on now up and the board will, will bring it forward on the uh, agenda. Okay. No, just not yet. And uh, Mary Beth, I'll ask you about it. I see the plot plan. It's marked number 54. I see one, two, three, four butters. Yes. I, do so. I don't see any adverse... Uh, Letters oh, from no, the there butters. isn't. But I, I do have a concern about requesting twelve chickens. Yeah, that's I, what I was going to bring that's, up forward. That's as well. a bit excessive, and for the size of this property, that's a bit excessive. So I wouldn't necessarily agree with twelve chickens. So, Mr. Augustino. Yes. Or uh, who is who is on the line for representing Mr. Augustino? Her, his daughter, Cassandra. Cassandra, okay. Is there some other way that you can revise the request for 12 and make it fewer than 12? Because that's a bit excessive for the size of the property that you have. Yes, we'll just get rid of some. That's all we can do. Okay, so what would you propose offering for a reasonable number of chickens to request? How many chickens, Dad? Whatever the law permits. permits. How, how much do you think for the size of the property? Amy, do you have a suggestion? Amy, you're muted. I know. I've got this little phone, and it's kind of hard with my fingernails. Okay. Amy. Um, the, and I'm not sure the applicant's right there. Um, That's half acre. It was, his, it was his neighbor that was elderly who gave him these chickens. So he's had the chickens on the property. He did not know he needed a permit until he received, I don't know, one of the neighbors said something, and and uh, we've had several of these in town because so for the he last has 12 chickens on the property presently? Yeah. Yes. So, I, I mean, he's got like, um, gosh, I can't remember. Was it three or four buildings in the back? And there's a um, easement between his property and behind. And I guess his neighbors love the chickens and they love the eggs. So. Nobody's complained uh, yet, but. Well, I would not normally um, request or recommend offering a permit for 12 chickens, but they have the chickens. So I would request that as the, if the chickens diminish that the number be reduced. Okay. Dr. Uh, Melanie, Laura, you, if I could offer that as a recommendation. Yeah, so 
I, I would have done the same. Um, tell me about how it came about, though, that we found out about the chickens so that uh, Apparently one of the neighbors uh, advised the applicant that they needed a permit because they didn't no, know that they needed a Amy permit. Amy shaking her head. Tell me something, Amy. Well, that part of that, yeah. I, I was doing um, an inspection on the street behind, and I don't know if that was St. Clair, but anyway, this gentleman wanted chickens. And he was a friend of the lady on, uh, on Franklin Street from the last meeting. And she had told me he wanted, so I went out there and he hasn't gotten his stuff together, but I looked up and I said, those look like chickens. And that's usually how we find out, you know, we're out and about in the community and, you know, nobody's complained. And he says, oh no, I have kids, we want chickens. So, and I went around, nobody was home. So that's, I sent uh, Mr. Augustino a letter and he works at one of our uh, uh, establishments. So I, I spoke with his daughter and to him, told him what he needed. And that, you know, in Braintree, you're required to have an animal permit, so. Yeah, and also, aren't they supposed to be confined and not out loose? They weren't loose. They're all confined and- Oh, okay, in a, so when you looked up, they were inside their thing. Yeah, but I can tell. I mean, Lori, you know, for years, you know, I've done this for like 20 <laughs> years, go around. You, you, unless somebody has a really big fence, um, I go around, you can- kind of see if not on one street on another street you can look in and and you go oh, I, I know what a chicken coop looks like okay, so can we car. ask can we ask Cassandra with the makeup of the coop and the run so that the board is familiar with what the prop how it's designed is it is the, the fencing around it is it buried into the ground so that would prevent wildlife and what is the manure uh, disposal method so they, my dad just built a um, plywood chicken coop and it's like, it's, I don't know how to explain this because I'm not good at this, but it has metal postings and then there's plywood, there's ventilation inside the chicken coop. Right next to the chicken coop where Amy saw is their chicken runway and it's all like fenced in. They don't, they don't, they're not outside. They're just fenced in during the day. During the nighttime, my dad brings them back into the chicken coop and they stay there during the nighttime. It's no, no animals can get in there because he made sure of that. So Cassandra, is the chicken run, the run area, is the fencing buried into the ground so that- Yes, it is. Okay. And what about the manure disposal? Um, the leaf compost and brain tree. Okay, so you clean it up and you dispose of it with your other yard waste products? Correct. Okay. Uh, Mary Beth, how long have the chickens been there? Cassandra, might you be able to help with that? Um, how long, Dad? Probably a, a, less than a year. Less than a year, my dad says. Well, we was six of them, but my there were, there were six chickens before, so my dad's friend passed away, and my dad decided to take the chickens into his hands. Then we got more chickens, and then we realized we didn't need, we didn't, we had to get the permit. That's okay. when we found out. So all together, there's 12 chickens in our backyard. Okay, so my recommendation to the board is they have 12 chickens. Um, they would be allowed to keep the 12 chickens, and as the chickens, um, you know, they Pass become away. Faster. Whereas well, the chickens become lesser in number that they, they my request is that they maintain no more than six chickens based on the size of the property. Correct. Okay. So I um, put forward a motion to uh, approve of the 12 chickens with the condition that as they um, pass that no more is added and that the maximum going forward with loss of life of chickens would be six chickens on that size of the property. For Victor Agostino at 54 St. Lawrence Street in Braintree. Okay. Dr. I second. Okay, roll call, Laurie? Yes. Dr. Nettleman? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, so I Cassandra, if you can let, well, let me say, Cassandra, if you can let your dad know that a permit for the 12 chickens will be issued and, the, and as the, the chicken numbers diminish that they be maintained at a number of six. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next one is uh, Rachel Horrock. 
Hi, Rachel. Yes. yes. And this is for how many chickens? Okay, Rachel. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, so, so right now we have two baby chickens, and uh, we're looking to get one more, so three total. Okay, the, the plot plan is a little bit confusing. It looks like it's on the corner, and we have two abutters. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Mary yeah, Beth? Yeah, there are actually three abutters. No, we I thought there was three, but um, yeah, the plot plan may not have been revised because um, Dell's Way used to just be a big chicken farm, and now there are homes there. They've only been there for about two years. So the plot plan that I got from the city didn't have those homes, but I went ahead and sent certified mail to those two new neighbors. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, so we have um, Ms. Horak has sent notification to 17 Burton Road, 20 Dells Way and 10 Dells Way, which would be um, the two direct abutters are 10 Dells Way and 17 Burton, but she also went to the, the extra step of notifying 20 Dells Way. Yeah. So right. all direct abutters have been notified. Yes, certified mail. And then the chicken coop, the, proposed for the, the proposal for the chicken coop is it would be on the um, rear corner of the property that abuts West Street and Dell's yes. Way. It's, uh, the chicken coop itself is 10 foot from the rear property line and 10 foot from the side property line. And Rachel, you can explain the makeup of the coop to the board and the run, that would be great. Yeah, so currently we don't have a run. We have just a few chickens, only two right now. And um, we haven't had the time to make a run yet. We would like to eventually, but right now we bought a, a prefabricated chicken coop from Ocean State Job Law. Um, so it's supposed to hold up to five chickens, but we don't want to put too many in there. Um, so it's, uh, it looks like a mini house with, um, some nesting boxes and in the bottom, um, is hard wire cloth wrapped around it. Um, so yeah, in essence, it's a prefabricated coop we bought from a store. And so the area that the chickens would kind of walk around is on the bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So We're all outside a lot. We have three children, so we go. We um, we expect to go outside. We can let them outside and um, run around with us. Um, okay. But only under supervision, because we okay. understand we have a lot of predators in our area. You do, and chickens do have a tendency as they get older to fly, which we found out last year when we had problems with chickens flying. So <laughs> yeah, yes, it's true. And so you'd have to clip the wings if they're, okay. they, can, they can be let out on your property as long as it's fenced, but the chickens cannot leave your property. And if they do, then it would, it's likely that it would be reintroduced back to the board for a follow-up to see if, you know, the stat, to, you know, check on the status of the permit. Got it, will do. And what is the maximum number of chickens that she would like a permit for? Oh, She's requesting three. three right now. Three. Mm -hmm. Great. Right. But are, are we In the compost? But are we specifying three chickens? That's what she's requesting. Okay. Yep. And what about the, the the waste? What are your plans with the waste? Yeah, so I'm an avid gardener, so I'm going to compost it. Um, you know, I have two garden plots at the Perkins Park Garden, and I think it's a great way to help my tomato and pepper plants. So, great. I put a motion forward to approve of three chickens, Rachel Horrock at 7 Burton Road, Braintree. I second. Okay, I roll call Laurie. Yes. Dr. Nettleman. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Horak. So tomorrow you. there'll be a permit going out for the keeping of three chickens. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. And the next one, uh, Mr. Daniels, you've been very patient. And uh, we have your permit. And this is for how many chickens? Uh, five, sir. And it looks according to the plot plan like there may be at least three abutters maybe five yeah i have five five but five of butter have you had any problems with any of the but uh, butters uh no sir okay mary beth no we haven't received any contact back from any of the butters and mr uh, daniels did notify all of them 
So the request that he's looking for is the uh, proposed coop would be to the, if you're looking into the property at 64 Tremont Street, it would be to the left of a shed and it would be um, greater than 25 feet to the front property line, the side property line and the rear property line. And Mr. Um, Daniels, you can explain, is it attached to the shed or is it abutting the shed? Uh, it's, it's next to the garage. To the garage, I'm sorry, okay. Okay, can you explain to the board the makeup of the coop and run and what your method of disposal for the manure would be? Yeah, the coop is, um, it's, uh, it's made of cedar wood and it has the nesting boxes and a tray to slide out to clean out the manure. And um, I'm going to purchase a chicken run which will attach to the outside but be fully enclosed. Probably maybe six feet by six feet. Okay. And that's where they'll spend most of the time. And I might put posts down and chicken wire deeper and make it like an outside enclosure, but I'd stay out there, you know, because I don't want a hawk. I've seen hawks. I don't want a hawk to come down and dive bomb them. Right. So if we could request when you're installing the run that the chicken, the, the fencing be, if you can dig into the ground and bury it into the ground because wildlife does have a yeah. tendency to try and crawl underneath, so. Yeah. And then your proposal for the manure disposal? Yeah, I'm gonna have a trough on the backside and I'm gonna use it for compost because I, I'm also an avid gardener. Okay. I have a pretty big garden patch. And whatever I don't use for compost, I'd probably even bag up and toss. Okay. Any problem, Mary Beth? No, I mean, we haven't had any concerns from the neighbors. And again, if we were to receive any concerns, we would follow up and investigate. And if necessary, bring it back before the board. Lori, would you like to make a motion? motion? Yep, I'll put a motion forward to uh, approve of uh, Mr. Daniels, um, is it four? Five. Five. Five chickens at 64 Tremont Street, Braintree. I second. Okay, and roll call vote, Laurie? Yes. Dr. Nettleman? Yes. Okay, so Mr. Daniels, your permit will be prepared and sent out tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Yep. The uh, next one, do we have Denny Ching here? Uh, yes, uh, I'm his wife, Christine Fan. I'm the owner of the property. Okay. Hi, Christine. Hi. Um, so, uh, Mr. Ching and um, Ms. Fan are requesting the keeping of 12 chickens on the property at 227 Kane Avenue. Again, this is one that I would recommend that that number be reduced. Um, that, that's an awful lot of chickens on a property. So is there an opportunity, um, Christine, to be able to reduce the number of chickens that you're requesting? Um, well, we were um, uh, given chickens by um, a friend of ours, so we have 11 um, in, a, in a brooder right now. They're just baby chickens. Um, we believe our property is quite large. It's uh, 5,000 square feet um, in just in our backyard, and it's fenced in. The, the fence is about six feet tall. So we thought that we would have um, plenty of room to house the, the 12 chickens, the hens. All right. Do you want to um, explain the coop and uh, your run? And yep. Um, so we do, we haven't gotten the coop yet, uh, but we do plan to, to order a, a coop um, from a, a New England manufacturer. Uh, it will have an enclosed run. Um, and in the area that we have, uh, we wanted to put it, there's actually, um, it, it used to be um, where you put a playground. So it's kind of, um, it's, it's got like a bit of a border already and we were gonna add um, a chicken wire around it as well to give uh, the chickens extra room if uh, we were gonna let them out. And uh, the post, I mean with the um, way Yes, uh, we were planning to compost as well. We do already have uh, the compost bin. What's your recommendation again, Mary Beth? Six. Well, again, like a previous applicant, I do feel that 12 is a bit excessive. Um, and so the, they have 11 right now. I would request that as the, if, you know, if and when the chicken number diminishes, that it be maintained at no more than six. Is that okay. all right with you? I would agree with that. Laurie, is that okay with you? Yep. You want to make a motion? 
Yeah, and there's no, uh, there were no concerns from any of others, correct? I haven't received any responses from any of others, no. Very good. All right, I move to um, approve for 11 chickens with the condition that as they were to pass that the maximum would then be at six chicken max. And that is for 227 Kane Ave for Mr. Daniel, Danny Ching and Christine Fan. I second. Uh, roll call vote, Laurie? Yes. Uh, roll call vote, Dr. Nelman? Yes. Thank you. Um, okay, so Ms. Fan, the board has approved the request for keeping up chickens and the permit will be sent out to you tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you, you too. Bye. And the last application for the chickens is Effie. Hi, Oreo. Hi, Oreo. Hi, yes. Oreo. Uh, Mary Beth, would you like to tell us about this one? Sure. So Miss Iorio uh, lives at 37 Dells Way, and she's requesting the, a permit for the keeping of six chickens on the property. All of the directed butters have been notified of the request to keep the chickens, um, and we received notification back from them. The chicken coop is 10, um, as you might be aware, Dells Way is a fairly new subdivision off of West Street on the Randolph side. And just, just before, as you go through five corners, it's just, it's before you get to the Blue Hill Cemetery. There is a picture in your packet of the chicken coop with the run. Mm, I do plan on making a bigger run for it. So I built the coop, but I am going to build another run when I get the time or I can buy one off Amazon and I'll watch them while I let them out. <clears throat> okay. So is, um, can you explain if your property itself is fenced in the rear where the coop will be? It is not, it and is not. maybe it will be later, but I don't think so right now, so I'm just gonna build my own fence for this coop. Okay, so because the property is not fenced, you, I mean, you cannot allow the chickens to run off of the property. I know you mentioned that if you let them out, they'll be under supervision. Mm -hmm. not, not as easy as one would think to maintain and um, kind of- Oh no, I meant I'll put them in their, um, the fence I make them and I'll watch them while they go, yeah. Okay, so again, as chickens get older, they do tend to fly. And if that becomes a problem, you would need to have the wings clipped. And do I just like cut off the edges of their feathers or how do I? I, I request or suggest that you reach out to a veterinarian to see what the best method of clipping a chicken's wings are. Yeah. I leave that to, the, to people that know more than I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about the letter from the abutter that's objecting? Um, well, I sent her a letter at first and she didn't respond. So I went to her house and I asked her if she could do it and she didn't. So I just sent out a certified letter and eventually she did send it back. And I think she did call town hall complaining. We did, she, yeah, at that point we didn't have a lot of information as to what the proposal was. So. Um, I have not heard back from that individual, and the, the notification was received. Mm -hmm. Which abutter was that, Mary Beth? Do you know? It was, I think, the Eleanor Drive abutter, 18 Eleanor Drive. I think so. And that's, you know, without the fencing, it is worrisome, so it's really necessary to make sure that they stay in the coop and, and you don't have them out. Mm -hmm, of course. Um, you know, I could definitely see that to be a problem and a worry. Right. Uh, you know, if the property was fenced, um, that may not be as much of a concern, but where it's not, I could see an abutter having a de definitely having a concern about it. Mm -hmm. I won't let my chickens out anywhere. Like when I'm, I won't let them out on like the property free because I don't want them to fly away or. Um, yeah, but also, you know, when you don't have fence if you know we do have an occasional really concern with coyotes and they can see them they can you know what i mean you really are putting the chickens even at risk and um bringing wildlife to that to that property so mm -hmm. it, so i should look into getting a fence i i would i think it's best for you and your chickens well, it's definitely something to think about for your property, especially when you're going to maintain chickens. Mm -hmm. Well, Mary Beth, 
And Laurie, I'm just concerned by the note that the neighbor has written on the letter. That they're opposed to the request. I'm sorry, but we are dealing with rats, possums, skunks, and rabbits. We had a company come out last summer and said we all need to put signs down as far as I know the health department is aware of this. Personally, I haven't seen any rodents at all, and if I need to, I can put traps down. And I will um, make sure the um, house for the chickens is rodent-proof. Uh, Mary Beth, have, are you aware, the department aware of uh, this complaint from the abutter? I, I'm not familiar with us having any, received any complaints about rodent activity in the West Street area on that side. Amy, are you familiar with anything? No. This just bothers me a little bit. So, um, Ms. Iorio, do you have the chickens yet? No, I do not. Okay. Um, it's the board's decision what you'd like to, how you'd like to act on this permit. Sorry? Uh, it's, no, I'm, I'm mentioning, I'm talking to the board members. Yeah, I'm, I'm just taking a moment here to read myself, um, taking a look at it. So the comments that were made on the one, um, looks like a Deborah, I don't know the, I can't read the last name. Like Mars? Yeah, I don't know if she's the one that's at 18 Eleanor Drive. He's... Um, I'm not sure, but the one that I talked to, who I went to the house, wasn't too happy so um, about that, so I'm not sure. So is well, that, is that a question of, what can you do to make her happy? Well, I can build um, a big fence, like I can build a fence around my coop and make like, um, you know, make sure rodents can't get underneath. And if I have to, I will put traps down and I'll clean it frequently so it won't attract many animals. Um, the other thing that the board can consider is reducing the number of chickens. Mm -hmm. that are being requested. Can Just I go to comment. five or? Amy? Uh, yeah, Mirabeth, Dr. Nettleman, Lori, um, as you know, uh, Dell's uh, chicken farm was there. And uh, when I, when you hired me back in 2000, I was up there a lot. Uh, he never had any problems. We really haven't had any problems up there once they, they removed the chicken farm and built the nice homes and everything. There is a, in the back of this property, again, there's a pretty big easement. Um, the, the properties um, kind of um, a triangle going back. Um, I think if she, you know, it's for her grandmother. Um, I'm, we haven't had any problems up there, but there's always a chance. But I think the fence is a good idea as long as you keep, you know, everything clean and hopefully we won't have any coyotes running up there. But we haven't had any complaints up there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little far from her house, so I don't know if it even right. should bother her. Well, I don't know if the persons that, so we have two documents here, the one that's saying they're opposed to the, the request for the permit and another one that had indicated the concern about wildlife and rodent activity. I don't know if that's one and the same person or the two different people. It looks okay. like two different people. So I know the two people who sent in the complaints. Um, one, she has a, one of them, she has a fence, so she can't really like see my yard because she has a fence and the other doesn't, but she's like, a little far from my house and there's like a lot of trees so I can't even see her yard that well but I know that she's there. And do, you don't have the chickens now correct? No. I I would suggest that we get the fence up and then come back and and for the permit with the fence up. Like a fence around my whole yard? Or even where somewhere where the chickens coop is going to be so that it has some protection. Yeah. Yeah, I can move on. I just don't want to be party to any situation that makes bad neighbors. Well, and, and I'm concerned about the chickens themselves too with the wildlife and not having the protection. 
and that yes. anything would be seen and, and able to go right in, right into your yard, right into them um, without any way of stopping. So, you know, I'd like to put a motion that we have uh, Miss uh, Lorio um, put a fence around the coop and then return for, um, for application of the permit. Well, how, high, how high would you like this fence? Around, around the coop or the property? Well, the property's pretty big, Dr. Nettleman. Um, I don't think we're going to fence the whole property because they said it was a lot of money. And I... Right. It's, it's a pretty big. I'm just wondering, so when I go out to do the re uh, you know, inspect. Well, can I, can, I make, can I make a suggestion? Why don't, if, if the board consider, would consider this, table this item until a future meeting. Yep. Or you can continue the item. I, that's what we could do is continue the item until a future meeting by tabling it. And then we can let Miss Iorio and her grandmother make a determination as to what they plan to do and then bring that presentation back to the board. I make a motion for exactly that, Mary Beth. That's what I was intending in the first place. Um, exactly. I'm confused. So what? Um, we're putting forth a, a motion for to table this and for you to come back with a, you know the either a proposed for the fence around the coop. Um, when will that be? Excuse me. Oh, when will that be? Like. Uh, well, it's really in your hands, Miss Iorio. So the board is requesting that you bring forward a plan, indicating how you will uh, put some sort of fencing up around the coop that will protect not only the animals, but anything from coming into that area where the coop would be. So the board is, is tabling the matter until a future meeting when you can bring that plan forward for their review and then they can make a determination if that satisfies their concerns and then they can move forward or not on a permit request. So that really is in your hands to decide how quickly you can bring forward a plan that would satisfy them. It could be next month, it could be August, so I don't have to wait till um, the next meeting. I can just figure it out and then tell the health board or? No, so what the board meets once a month. So this, if you're, if you are going to bring something forward, the next meeting would be in July. Okay. So that's a motion on the table to have this, uh, Miss. Uh, I second. I second. Tabled uh, for 37 Dell's Way. Okay. And so I need a roll call, Laurie? Yes. And Dr. Nettleman? Yes. Okay. So if you can put a plan together of what you propose to do as far as enclosing that area where the coop would be, okay. that you can bring forward to the board for the review and they can make a determination whether or not the permit can be issued based on what you're presenting. Okay. So I think I, okay. I'm concerned about that letter, that note that the that the neighbor put down, and anything that uh, you can do to get something that's a little more favorable would be helpful. So, Miss Iorio, one thing that the board always does take into consideration are concerns of abutters, and um, they they try and make a reasonable and responsible decision to bring both parties together to try and come to a reasonable conclusion to be able to to issue a permit to you but also uh, you know um ease any concerns that neighbors could have so in any communication that you might have and let them know that you're going to put a fence around so that you don't have the attraction of rodents and animals and you know maybe they'll even you know consider writing another letter saying now that we're going to have a fence around the coop i now approve of it that would be helpful if they were able to do that. We and I, might sorry. I did express that um, I knew that when I got the coop, I was going to build another fence. So I know that I'm going to do that, but um, there would be no way to get the permit like soon. Well, again, the board has, has tabled the matter to a future meeting pending whatever plan you're going to bring forward to them. And I would, it has to be documented what your plan is to provide some sort of fencing enclosure around this chicken coop. Mary Beth? Yes. If I would say, if Laurie agrees, 
if this young lady gets the fence up and gets an, um, a, um, some type of statement from the neighbor, I don't mind if uh, if you call us individually. Can we give you approval? No, no. It has, no. It has to be an official meeting. It has to be in a meeting. Okay. Um, right. I don't think I, like, do I have to go to the neighbor again and get, like, like, I have to go to her, um, place again, or? So, then, so the, there are at least two neighbors that have expressed concern about opposition to this application. Mm -hmm. And one has, has documented some pretty serious concerns that they would have. So the, you need to show some sort of, um, uh, action that you're going to take to remediate what their concerns are and one of the ways that you could do that is number one whatever your plans with this fence and then secondly is reaching out to these neighbors and express to them what your plan is and how you are going to try and remedy any concerns that they may have one of them is about wildlife and rodent activity another one indicates they're opposed to it so, so do i have to get a letter back from her because that will be difficult because i don't think she's I can send her a letter, but I don't think she'll send me anything back. Okay. Well, I mean, the suggestion might be that you send a letter indicating that you've, you've, uh, you understand the concerns that she's expressed to the board and that these are the things that you're going to do to remedy the concerns that she would have and send that certified and then just give us proof that you've sent something and indicated in the letter how you're going to remedy what concerns those individuals have. Is that agreeable, Dr. Nettleman and Larry? Yes, 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 it is. Yeah, so that you know, then we will hear what they have. If they don't have any complaints after you've sent this, and we don't hear from them, we are much more happier to um, to make this go forward. Okay. Okay. The next next item has to do with well permits applications. First one that I have is. Stella Fiddler. I don't know that we have any of the applicants for wells on the line, um, but we have worked with the well driller on each of these. Okay. Now the, the well driller's out of Tewksbury. Um, I, was, I met with him on these uh, three properties. It's in the back of uh, where Messina Woods, and then they made this new, to, new road, Jensen. So I was at all the properties. The only one I had, an issue with was 21 because of where the applicant wanted to put it, but the well driller couldn't get his rig there to be stable. So, um, okay, so let's take up 80, if we could, 81. Right. In the woods drive first. So, Which the one? 80, 81, it's 2A, 81. Yes, 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 drive. yes. yes. So, the proposal, yes, the proposal for this is they have, they're able to maintain greater than 10 feet from the, the dwelling, greater than 55 feet to the side property line, but they can only maintain 20 feet to the roadway and the required setback per reg is 100 feet. <clears throat> they have a big fence. It's probably a six foot fence. Um, they'd have to take the whole thing. Again, the rig that uh, I think, Mary Beth, I don't have the copy, but is it TJ Ogden? Is that, no, not yes. all. These are all John well, uh, Wellwater Connection. Wellwater, okay, sorry. I just worked with him the other day. Uh, Wellwater, so it's, it's how these rigs are set up um, that they have to have pretty stable. Plus the, you know, it's right next to like, I don't know, what did I say? 55 feet from the electrical box. And, but it's because they put this fencing up and then they decided they wanted the well. So, um, I don't foresee any problem because not only do you have the, the 20 feet to the roadway, but then you also have the roadway, which, you know, would be the, a separator between them and anyone across the street. Is there a concern where we can't get the 100 feet and we, there is only the 20? Well, um, the problem is that really you can't get the drilling equipment into the property with this fence that they've erected, so. Right. No, I get that. But are you concerned, Mary Beth, for anything um in that area that this would be not a good idea no okay and we haven't received any concerns by direct advisors which they've all been notified okay. what's your um, recommendation to, i recommend approval yep. so i put a motion forward to approve a well 
at 81 Messina Wood Drive for the um, Stella Fiddler. Okay. I, se I second. And roll call, Laurie? Yes. Dr. Nettleman? Yes. Okay. Thank you. The next one has to do with Quilai Tan. Yes. Street number 21, Jensen Farm Road. So in your packet, you have the, the proof of ownership of the property. You also have um, plot plan indicating the proposed well. It's somewhat on the, uh, it's to the side of the property. If you're looking into the property at, on Jensen Farm Road, it would be to the left of the property. It would be 23 feet from the side property line and well over, um, well over 25 feet to the rear property line. The concern here again is the um, roadway, the setback to the roadway. They can't get the 100 feet. And it's pretty close to the house as well, am I correct? Um, it's 11 feet from the house. Okay. And that one, Lori, is again, um, the way the property sets, it's kind of like, uh, if you were looking at the house to the left of the property, it's kind of like a mound and it goes down in the back of that property. You got to take a drive back. I mean, I remember going back there years ago and it was nothing but woods. So um, it's really nice back there. But uh, again, it was, it's all about the rig. They could put the rig where the property owner wanted to put it. They couldn't put the rig because the rig would just tip over. Yeah, it's a so, drop. Did you the property drops down in the back. So, Amy, you were concerned about it. Do you have concerns about this going forward? Why? Yes. Do you have concerns? No, no, because I talked to the property uh, owner and, you know, uh, the well driller was there and I showed him exactly where they wanted it. And I said, well, why can't it go there? And then he explained. He says, there's no way the rig could, to, I mean, it would be like this and these rigs, it would just topple over. So then we said, we talked to the homeowner and said, it would be a little bit better. I mean, the regulations are 10 feet from any structure. And I told uh, John, I said, can we, can we make it 11 feet? He could probably make it 12 or even a little further if you prefer. I don't know how, I mean, I have to go out and do the tape measure again, but um, you know, they have a circular driveway. So it's kind of, I don't know, probably, mm, it might be 10 feet from the driveway too. So. Um, it's it's right on the curve on the bend uh, there, so I don't have any issue. Again, it's the rigging. Okay. I put a motion forward to approve a well at we have 21 Jensen Farm Road in Braintree for owner Kwila Tan. I second. Okay, roll call, Laurie. Yes. Dr. Nettleman. Yes. Thank you. And the last one that I have is uh, well permit for Abu Safar, 80 Jensen Farm Road. Yes. So this particular property, the, you have in your packet all of the notifications to the letters, the ownership of the property documentation, and the plot plan. The proposal for this would be uh, 25 feet, no, excuse me. It's 73 feet from the roadway to the proposed well location and 11 foot to the side property line. They do have enough footage to the rear of the property line. Um, the request is for the, the, the well in that location so they would not meet the 100 foot setback to the, the roadway. So you're happy with it? I have no objection. Amy, you okay with it? Yeah, I'm okay. Again, this this property in the back, you know, where I thought it was going to go. Well, they can't even get the rig in the back. So, um, yeah, there's some wetlands down there. So, uh, I mean, I think I think it's wetlands. But I, uh, anyway, we decided to move it from one side to the other, and um, j again because of the rig. And how far, it's hard for me to see what's the footage from the house. Again, it is, hang on. That one's more. Is that 15, 20 feet? I can't remember. 
I don't have the paperwork, Lori, so. It just, maybe, yes. a, it's really kind of hard to tell, yeah. but I guess. It, it, it's definitely at least 10 feet from the, the dwelling. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, he can always move it a couple more feet. I mean, it, you know. Yeah, it looks okay. All right, I, I put a motion forward to approve the well. Okay. 80 Jensen Farm Road for um, Abu Zaba. And I second. Okay, Laurie, roll call. Yes. Dr. Nettleman? Yes. Thank you. Okay. okay. That's all the uh, permits. And do we have any other new or old business, Mary Beth? That you um, want I, I just to wanted to update you on where the town is uh, with the COVID response. Um, I have a question. See? Okay. Um, do you think if I can bring my grandmother in so you can tell her the same things you told me? Sure. Okay. Well, we can talk. If you can give us a call in the morning, we can discuss it. We need to continue with the board meeting. I'm sorry. Okay. So I should, can I? So if you can call the office in the morning at, we can give you the phone number now. That would work. Yeah. 781-794-1500. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Bye-bye. Um, I did want to update the board on the, um, the town's COVID response and in particular our department. So you're getting my daily reports about the numbers and they, they are decreasing. Although today they didn't do so well. <laughs> no. So where the numbers are starting to sli slightly go up again. And if you, if you notice, it's um, individuals, young individuals within the community. Yeah, you look like you get, you're getting community spread, which is loud, yeah. not just your long-term care facilities, which is right. So that's definitely concerning. Um, and, and it was, we've, we've been concerned about that as things start to reopen and as well as the, those at the state level too. So that's gonna continue to be monitored. We are actively involved in the phase two reopening, which began on June 8th. So department inspectors are actively involved with working with restaurants, retail stores, um, rec camps, child care centers, and all of the establishments that would be uh, within the phase two reopening plan. So it's been pretty busy in the office. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, I, I know. And uh, you're letting the, the company self-report as what the state recommendation is, and then they post it that they've done their check boxes and yeah so the requirement is that they have a written plan in place we they don't have to submit it to us for approval but they do have to put available in the establishment for inspection if requested so not only could the local town through the health department uh, conduct follow-ups if we receive complaints or need to visit the establishment but the state health department and the department of labor standard could as well so they need to have those plans in place in written form in the establishment and we're, we're making sure that um, all of those establishments are receiving the documentation, indicating what their requirements are and who could be involved with any follow-up enforcement or just follow-ups on complaints and so forth. Yeah. And Mary Beth, just to let you know, because I did um, two inspections today, Ruby Tie was gonna be, uh, they're gonna try to open. Um, I did Charlie's, yes, uh, not yesterday, the day before. Charlie's has been open. They were very busy yesterday, which is good. Duncan's opened in the food court yesterday, or no, sorry, today. And Ruby Thai, it's a, a little bit of a language barrier, but uh, the manager that was there, I, I spoke to him in depth the other day when I was there, um, as far as all the, the planning, you know, the paperwork, the welcome poster, everything. I told him he needed to train, uh, you know, um, all his employees, he said he did. I don't know how much of a written plan. Uh, some of these people, I think we're probably gonna have to reach out. At, I don't know if we need to put a template together because the language barrier with many of our establishments, um, you know, it, it's gonna take maybe a little bit longer. Place is clean, they've got the mask, they've got the barrier, they've got the disinfectant, the sanitizer, and the gloves, and the hair restraints. So. Well uh, so, so the social plaza opened for retail service yesterday at 11 o'clock so a, a good my number concern is how how are they actually going to monitor the social distancing in inside 
the com, you know the uh, community area where everybody right. walks. So there are two different phases to it. The retail stores have their own industry sector requirements, and some of the things that need to be met for retail stores, they cannot exceed any more than forty percent occupancy in the store. That includes employees and customers. Correct. They must maintain a six foot social distance between each individual in the store. And they also have to wear face coverings at all times. That's in the retail stores. So the management has to ensure that that's happening. As far as the common areas in the social plaza, the social plaza has reduced the number of entrances into the property. Instead of the large number of entrances in many locations, they've reduced those down so that their security staff and management staff can monitor that. So all of the doors that you could easily exit, those will still, you can still exit them. It's just that on the inbound side, they're locked so you can't get into them. So there are about seven entrances throughout the plaza that would be allowed for a public entry. And um, the social plaza management and security staff have an app on their phone that is uh, Wi-Fi capable and anyone that enters that property, it dings the phone. So that's the, it keeps a tally of how many people are on the property. So the requirement for the common spaces in the plaza is again, no more than 40%. So that's how they're monitoring it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought they use it. Apparently Simon Properties uses it throughout all of their properties in the nation. Yeah. And they found it very, it's like 99% effective is what the manager explained today. Now they need to have the infrared thermometer so when it pings, it can say, okay, you're a COVID, you're a COVID risk, get out. <laughs> hey, well, one, of the, one of the interesting things that came down on Tuesday, on Monday, excuse me, the rec camp regulations and the child care regulations prior to Monday required that uh, temperature checks be done during daily screenings of children. And the state came back and said that through their medical director that the temperature checks are not now considered one of the scientific methods of determining whether or not an individual There's too many false negatives, too many problems with right. the, you know. so they remove that segment of a requirement from those regulations which actually is a good thing um okay. you know the the they still have to perform daily health screenings so it's, we leave it to the establishments to decide if they're going to have specific requirements in addition to what the state requirements are, such as temperature checks, but it's not something that's mandatory. Now, Mayor Beth, you've had such a large number of cases of COVID-19. Uh, yes. And uh, today's increase was a little worrisome. And you have the nurses going off to summer you have a group that is staying on to support you or is it just going to be what do you got going so the the nurses are at present coming in on tuesdays and fridays which has been working really well as the numbers have been lower and they're on standby both mary mulready and the uh 11 nurses that have been helping us have are on standby all summer for us so they, mm -hmm. they, they advise they will wait by the phone oh good so I don't foresee that as a problem, that we would be able to have staff come back in uh, if and when that would be necessary. We're thinking it would probably be, you know, towards the end of July into August, maybe the fall. Yeah. And then do you have a plan like if, um, if you know, we, if we're going to hopefully have some partial reentry to school? And um, I'm sure they're working on summer camps in school for especially for those most vulnerable students, um, which a lot of, you know, will be very minimal amount of students because we know our numbers have to be. Um, but I'm sure they'll see some that really are necessary to have some in service at a very minimal. And right. do you have a plan for the nurses to like follow families? Um, in the schools, like if a family member from a school, do your nurse is able to, you know, do that uh, reach out and communication and, and follow those families? So Jean and I have talked about that, but we haven't, we really haven't gotten much guidance down from the state on the schools yet. So as we see plans and requirements from the Department of Education, then we can better assess what the best method is to try and plan for that. But those are certainly options that Jean and I have spoken about. And I, I know that the nurses would be on board. Uh, Jean and Sally would be on board, board with that because it would definitely help. We can all help each other. 
Correct, because that's what we're going to do in Weston as well. So good. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes, Dr. Nettleman, you have a motion to adjourn. I'm is there a roll call, Laurie? All in favor. Yes, all in favor. Dr. Nettleman? Yes. Okay. Nice to and see you, Dr. Nettleman. And uh, uh, sorry, I can't see, see you. Too. Too. I know. Sorry, Gary. Amy. That's okay. Alrighty. All Thanks right. I got Bye -bye. on. At least it worked tonight. It hadn't been working at all. So, y'all be well. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, care. Andrew. All right. Bye -bye. Have a good night. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for all your work on that. Thank you very much.